Hello, uh, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we're going to continue with our bridge design. Uh, last time we uh, designed the deck, this time we're going to go ahead and design one of these interior girder. And uh, we talked about uh, the multiple steps that you have to follow, which I got on the screen right here. So let's go ahead and get to work. This is going to be uh, just go ahead, take it easy, go get yourself a cup of coffee, relax, and enjoy it. It's going to be uh, a little bit up and down with this uh, example. Uh, so we're going to design one of this interior girder, and the, the first we're going to go look at the design criteria. I have some of the information on the board. Uh, we have uh, the span is about 45 feet. We have six girder, and the spacing is going to be eight feet between them, and we're going to have eight inch concrete deck. And um, let's go and just move to step number two. Step number two, we're going to go ahead and select a size, and we try it. If we look at the ash though, a two point. 5.2.6.3, which I have it right here on the board. Um, and if you look at the uh, uh, the t that table and the bottom row steel and the second row depth of the I beam, it says the minimum has to be 0 0.033 times L, which is going to become 0 0.0 times 45 x 17 inches. So we're going to go ahead and try the W uh, 24 by 76. Let's try W. And if we look at the, uh, all the information for, uh, from ASC uh, uh, handbook manual, the W24 by 76, it's right there, and we have those information. The next thing we're going to go ahead, we're going to uh, compute the uh, step three. We're going to compute the uh, effective uh, um, flange width. Now, effective flange width, it's going to be, uh, one o I want to know what size. This is, I got 96 here. The reason I got 96 here, these are about 8 feet apart. So basically, my turbulatory width, it's going to be between this beam and this beam. It's going to be something like that right here. And, and that's going to be the portion that this beam is going to carry, which is the turbulatory width. And that comes out to 96 inches or 8 feet. And that's our step number three. Compute that, so that's yeah, effective B, what we're going to call it. Uh, it's going to be uh, 8 feet times 12 inches equal 96 inches. So that's our um, effective uh, flange width. Um, then we're going to go ahead to step number four. And then we're going to compute dead load on composite section. Let me write this down. Dead load on composite. See if I can still write section. I took the whole screen. And uh, and we're gonna go ahead and start out with the uh, D deck slab, and that's gonna come out to we know the um, this portion is 96 or 8 feet, so we got 8 feet right here, and then we have. Uh, um, uh, 8 inches, so that's 8 inches divided by 12, so that's the uh, width time thickness, and we're going to go per 1 foot section, so we're going to multiply that at 0.15, we said in the design criteria it's 150 pounds per cubic concrete, so that's the same as the 0.15 kip per cubic feet. And that's going to give me uh, 0.8 kip per foot. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and find out. Uh, this is uh, our hunch is about 2 inches right here. I didn't write it down. So hunch is about 2 inch. And that distance is 2 inches. And so we're going to find the uh, um, D hunch. And that's going to be 2 inch basically divided by 12. And multiply that by uh, the beam right here. Based on the information we have is 9 inches. So the, I mean the uh, uh, flange. So time 9 divided by 12. And then that's 150 pound concrete, which is 0.15 kip per cubic feet. And that should give me um, 0.02 kip per foot. 
Now the next one I want to calculate is the, uh, so far we want to find out the dead weight, the dead weight of the concrete we did, the dead weight of the hunch we did, now we're going to find the dead weight of the steel. But when you have these steel, between these two is the diaphragm between each one of these. So we're going to add additional 5% for those diaphragm and other stuff. So we're going to say, okay, the D steel comes out to equal, uh, we said it's a 76 pound per foot, so that's 0 0.076 kip per foot plus, we don't have to multiply that by anything, and we're going to say another 5% for the diaphragm between them, and that's going to be time 0.05, time 0 0.006, and that comes out to uh, uh, 0 0.08 kip per foot. So now we have that. We're going to go ahead. Um, sometimes, depend where you are, depend what the contract and stuff like that, and a designer. A lot of time they have a, like uh, uh, just a concrete uh, 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 stay in form, or, or just a uh, form can be removed later on. So let's say we have a stay in form, and we're going to go ahead, okay, DC for a stay in place form. Stay in place form, and let's say that's about a seven pound per square foot, and multiply that by, uh, um, say, the width of our grid is forty-four feet. Uh, uh, forty feet roadway is forty feet wide. Forty feet, forty-four feet wide, divided by six girder. So this is a girder, this is the width of the roadway. And that's going to come out to 0 0.015. 0 0.051 kip per foot. And this add them all up. So summation comes out 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0.02. I got total the, so my total, total DC comes out to a 0.951. Okay, now we have calculated the uh, load. The load is per foot. Basically, what we did here, we uh, um, went over here and we calculated this load. And uh, for a dead load, total came out to be uh, uh, 0 0.951. So that became what 0.951 kip per foot. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate the moment. And from the beam formula that we have up there, you've seen it before, we're going to say MDC1, MDC1 is equal W L squared divided by 8, which that comes out to uh, 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 0 0.95, 0 0.95 time, our span is 45 feet squared divided by 8, so that comes out to um, 240.46. 240.46, uh, that's a kip foot, and uh, let me just write that down here, make sure I got room. I don't know what's with you, so I'm going to have M. DC1 came out to 240.46 kip foot. Great. Okay. And the next one we're going to calculate is going to be um, the shear. Shear VDC1. That's a WL divided by 2 for the reaction for this type of thing from the beam formula. You know that but from a structural analysis, so W is 0 0.95 times 45, and divide that by 2, and I get 21.37. Um, 21.37 kip. So VDC1 comes out to 21.37 kip. All right, and then the next thing we're going to go ahead and find out the weight of the barrier. So W barrier, and it was given to us uh, on the design criteria, 
It was a 0.353 kip per foot. 0.353 kip per foot. And let's go ahead and make that to uh, uh, get the moment out of that. So there's a two of them, one on each end. And we're going to say uh, two time 0.353 and um, divided by uh, six girder, divided by six girder or beam, whatever we call it, same thing. And that's going to come out to 0.118 kip per foot. So now my M moment, MCD barrier, comes out WL squared divided by 8. So it's going to be uh, 0.118. L squared is 2045. Say that again. Forty-five squared divided by eight, and that comes out to uh, twenty-nine eighty-seven kip foot. Twenty-nine point eighty-seven kip foot. So I'm going to say uh, WMDMDCB. comes out to twenty-nine eighty-seven. And the next thing we have is the uh, find out the shear force for that. VCDB, WL divided by 2, right? And that is, uh, let's change marker so they can recharge. So that comes out to 0.118 multiplied by 45, divide that by 2. I get... Um, 2.66 kip. So VCDB, VCDB comes out to 2.66 kip. 66 six kip. All right. And then we had wearing surface, and the wearing surface was given in design criteria 25 pound. Uh, w wearing surface was 25 pound per square foot, so that should be PSF pound square foot. And let's go ahead and say DW for the wearing surface is equal. Uh, we have um, the roadway width is 44 feet wide, and that's the width of the roadway. W roadway. Okay, so 44 wide, and time uh, 0.0, 25 pound, 0 0.025 kip, uh, that'd be kip per foot square. It's important to keep the unit in mind. And then we have, uh, again, that's per six girder. So we, gotta, we want it for one girder, not for all of them. So per six girder, so divide that by six girders, and that comes out to 0.183 kip per foot, 0.183 kip per foot. So now we're going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to go and find out MDW. MDW comes out W or squared divided by 8, so it's 0.183 times 45 squared divided by 8. And that comes out to uh, 46.32, 46.32 kip foot. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to have a M D C wearing surface, and that is um, 46.32. Okay, kip foot. Again, same thing, let's find out the sh share, VDW, and that is equal W L divided by 2. So W is 0 0.183, L is 45, divided by 2, and that comes out to uh, um, 412. 
4.112. Okay. So here VDW, VDW comes out uh, 4.112 kilts. Okay. Now this, so so far what we have done, we complete, we are, uh, we try to design this interior girder, but we're going to design it for you. You got to find the load, right? So we did go ahead calculate the dead load. So the dead load was this what we have. And we take the dead load, we made a, a moment and share out of it. So there's our moment and share for the dead load. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and calculate the life load. I'm going to erase this right here. One, two, three. Pretty good, huh? All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at the life load. Um, before we compute the life load, let's compute the life load distribution factor. So let's say step number five. Compute life load distribution factor. And uh, be one of the things I want to do first before we go ahead, I want to find out my n, uh, what's going to be uh, for composite section. So uh, as you can see by the formula we have up there, the uh, concrete is um, the modular velocity of concrete from ash to 5.4.2.41 uh, is um, 33,000 uh, multiplied by uh, WC by 0 0.15 unit weight of the concrete time F prime C. And that comes out to uh, um, let me change marker here. That comes out to 33,000 multiplied by, uh, we said there was 150 pound concrete, so it's 0 0.15 cubic feet by power of 1.5 times square root of 4.5 kip, KSI. And uh, EC comes out to, um, this is kind of hard to see. Let's switch back to EC comes out to uh, 4066 KSI. Okay, now the N is basically EC uh, divided by, uh, E steel divided by EC. And steel is a 29,000, the module elasticity for the steel is 29,000 KSI, divide that by 4,066 KSI. And my n comes out to uh, um, 715. Say uh, n is equal 8. Okay. Then we're going to go to uh, Ashto. A point four point Ashto of uh, 4.6.2, 4.6.2.2.2. One dash one, and from there we're gonna find out. Look at the uh, uh, longitudinal uh, stiffness parameter. So the longitudinal stiffness parameter kg. It's gonna come out to uh, uh, n time i moment inertia of the steel plus the area, and plus the uh, uh, e g square. Now our e g. We're going to figure that out in a minute. Let's do this first. N is 8 equal 8 time moment inertia for the uh, beam that we showed at the beginning was uh, uh, 2100 plus the, uh, um, the area was uh, for the steel again was 22.4 22.4 
time ag squared. Now ag squared is a 17.9. It is the uh, distance <coughs> so EG is a distance from the center of the uh, beam to the center of the uh, slab. So from here to here is 1195. So now we got 1195 from here to there. So it's going to be 1195 plus 2 inch hunch plus uh, 4 inch. So that comes out to 6, 6, 17.95. So that becomes 17.9, did I say? Yeah. Square, so that comes out to uh, 74,500. 74,500. Let me do something here. I want to make sure that this enemy stays by itself. There we go. So now we found KG. And uh, from table, um, ASHTO table, ASHTO table 4.6.2.2, um, B-1. We're going to have distribution factors equal uh, 0.075 plus uh, S by power 9.5, and that is by point power 0 0.6, and time, let me double check that, it's divided by L. S divided by L by power 0.2 times kg divided by uh, 1.2 L thickness of the slab by power 3, and that by power 0.1. So if I plug all that number in, it becomes 0 0.075. So DF is equal 0 0.075 plus um, 8 is the spacing divided by 9.5 uh, by power 0.6 time, take that out, 8 by 45 feet by power 0.2 time kg came out to 74,500, 74,500 divided by 1.2 times 45 time the thickness of the slab was uh, 8 by power 3. And I get uh, 0.64. Double check my number. I could be off a little bit. So now that's a DF. And the DF for the shear, that was for the uh, uh, moment. So for the shear, it's going to be DF shear. And that comes out to, um, that's going to be from uh, um, A, another table, which is a table A, 4.6. 2.2.29, I think it's 1, A. I had it on the board anyway. So it's equal point to, I'm going to, you see the equation there, I'm just going to write the number down. Point 0.2 times, point 0.2 plus S divided by 12 minus S divided by 35 by power of, uh, Two, and that comes out to uh, 0.2 plus 8 divided by 12 minus 8 divided by 35 by power 2. So I get the number of uh, 0 0.81, 0 0.814. So those are two distribution factors right there um, for the shear DFS. And then we have... Um, Now we're going to have these two. So let's write that down. The distribution factor came out to 0.64. Distribution factor for the share came out to 0.814.
Okay, this will bring us to step number six, which we're going to compute in life uh, load moment. Um, let's write this down, step number six. And um, let's draw this first. Okay, that's our beam, and this will be our reaction right here. And uh, we uh, we say that um, let's bring in the center line. That doesn't work. It's too bad. Let's see if this one works. Oh, yeah. So this is our center line, and 45 feet divided by 2, it's going to be 22.5. So this is 22.5, and this is 22.5 feet. Now, um, that shows up good. So um, a lot of time, I if you want to know how we're going to find the maximum life moment, take a look at this video I have out there. We did it with, uh, we did it with uh, robot, and we did it with hand calculation. So that's where some of that stuff comes in. And we're going to say that um, we're going to place the load right here. Uh, we're going to say put the 32 cubes right here. This is for HL93. HL93 loading. OK. And uh, we're going to put 32 kips right here. And as you can see, 14 feet away from it, it's going to be 8 kip. And then the other 32 kips is going to be 14 feet away right here. And the, the way we're going to did it before is um, this distance is going to be 2.4 feet. If you want to know how we got that distance, look at the, the video. But here's the interesting thing. We can do that and find the maximum moment. A lot of time, you see a lot of textbook, a lot of design, and just don't bother. They just can put the 32 right in the center and do it that way, and the number comes out close enough. So when you look at the uh, robot structural analysis, we it's pretty easy anyway. Just watch the video, and you find out this number. To do the astro life load, we have to calculate a three different type of load. We're going to do HL93, and we're going to calculate the moment. And then we're going to go ahead and do a uh, tandem design or military loading. And we're going to compute the moment and see which one is bigger. That one's going to control. And then we're going to compute the uh, 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 moment for the uh, li lane life load. Then we have all this. So let's go ahead and that's what we're going to do. OK, uh, <coughs> now we have this type of loading right here. I want to figure out the reaction. <coughs> you know how you do that. Take a moment about point um, uh, A right here. Summation moment about point A equals 0 going counterclockwise is positive. And I'm going to have uh, minus 8. And it's going to become that way. So it's going to be minus 8 multiplied by that distance. If this is 22 and a half and from the center line, and this is 2.4, 2, 2 feet 4 inches. That is a 2 feet 4 inches, and it's something like this. So the distance is 2 feet 4 inches, or 2.37. So that's 2 point, it comes out to 2, point, um, um, two feet 4 inches. So I'm going to say that is time 22.5 minus 14 feet minus. Uh, Two feet four inches, and um, I think this comes out to six point seven something, one seven. Then I have minus thirty two, and that's going to be uh, basically um, twenty two point 
22.5 minus 2.4 inches, so come that becomes out to 20.167. That is this distance minus 2 feet 4 inches. And then I'm going to have this one plus 32 times, um, that comes out to 34,167. Uh, 34.167, you can figure it out. It's pretty simple math anyway. And therefore, uh, plus um, RA, uh, RB, plus RB time 45 feet equals zero. And from there, we can find out RA is uh, RB comes out to uh, 32.26, and RA comes out 39.7 kip. I need a kip. So the max moment, the maximum moment we talked about, if we go ahead and draw this right here, we did this a lot in structural analysis. So this is the 32 kip right here. We said the maximum moment is going to fall right underneath this float right there. So if we go ahead and make a cut, you're going to have a shear here, you're going to have moment here, and you're going to have um, actual force. So we're looking for this moment right there. And we have a reaction force RA here, and RA was, uh, I mean, uh, so this came out to 39.7, and this distance is going to be uh, um, 22.5 minus 2 feet 4 inches. And uh, let's find out our maximum moment. So let's say that M over there, M is equal, oh, I'm just taking a moment by that point. Summation moment about, let's call this point C. Point, point C counterclockwise is positive, and we're going to have 39.7, uh, 39.7, and that is going counterclockwise time, and that distance was 20.16. That comes out to 20.16. And minus, we have the 8 four or eight kip right here. I forgot about that. That's the 8 kip right there. And um, let me, yeah, same color. Let me fix this a little bit, make it cool. This right here is 8 kip. And that's a 32 kip right there. Okay. So 8 kip. From two is a 14 feet. So minus 8 times 14, and then you have the moment plus MC, MC hammer. So my moment kind of come out to, um, kind of call it moment LL, comes out to uh, 538.7, 538.7530, say that again, 538. Point seven kip for this one controls. I'm going to say down. We'll find out. So I'm going to say MLL five thirty eight point seven kip foot. I want to find out the shear for right here. VLL is compressed right here, and that comes out to basically. Um, we want to find out the maximum shear. This is not the maximum shear. Maximum shear it happens where do you have uh, let me write it here. So the maximum shear happens if this is your span and you're gonna have 32 kip right at the end, 30 kip to uh, 14 feet away, right here, and then you have the 8 kip right here. This is military. I mean this is a HL93 loading. So your max shear is gonna happen right there, and we're gonna say the maximum shear is right there, and we wanted to say V L. L, which is going to be R, our RB anyway, for this scenario or loading. Remember, this is the influence line uh, we're doing. If years ago we just used the influence line analysis and go ahead and follow this one step by step. Today we have a computer. We put it into the computer and it moves it all the way from one end to the other end. And by practice we have found out, okay, 
When we move all this stuff all the way here, the maximum happen in this location for the moment and for the shear. So now we're going to have right here. So VLL is equal. I got to take a moment about point uh, A right here. So we're going to find out. Let's call this RA. And we're going to go ahead. Um, summation moment about point A is equal to 0. This is a counterclockwise is positive, and we're going to have minus 8. This distance is going to become 17. You can figure that out. That's nothing. This is a 45 feet, and if this is a 14 feet, and that's a 14 feet, 14 feet, 14 feet, and that becomes 17. 28, 28, 38, 38, and 2 is uh, 40, 45 feet. That's what, how you got it. So we're going to say minus 8 times 17 minus 32 times 31 plus 32 times 45 minus RB times 45. So RB, which has become VLL, from here RB is equal VLL, and that comes out to uh, 5706 kip. 57. So VLL come out. 57.06 kip. All right. We're doing good. So this was uh, um, loading due to HL93. Now we're going to say we're going to go ahead and do the loading, tandem loading, to make sure that which one controls. So I'm going to erase this right here. And now we're going to go ahead. Uh, we did the HL93. We're going to do a tandem. And we're going to say uh, the tandem is basically a uh, uh, 25 ton, 25 kip, I mean, on both sides. And they're about four feet apart. So if this would be two feet, that would be two feet. And we're going to go ahead and calculate the uh, moment for that. And the same thing, we're going to go ahead and we know our reaction, obviously, is going to be 25 each right here. And therefore, I'm going to take a moment, um, a moment about the center. And we have our reaction here became 25 kips. And let's do a share moment for the cut. And we said right there, that's a 25. This is a 22.5. And that's a 2 feet. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the moment, maximum moment. About this point, it's going to be uh, summation moment about point C is equal to 0. I'm going to have 25 going this way, minus 25 times 22.5. And then I have 25 plus 25, which is this one right here, times 2 feet. Equal 0. Oh, no, not equal 0 and uh, plus MC, plus MC, in this case is the MLL for tandem, equals zero. So MLL tandem comes out to uh, 513 kips. And you know, so this will control, I'm not going to bother writing down, and a shear max, it's going to be, uh, if this is a 45 footer, our shear max is going to be right here, 25 ton right there, 25 kips, I keep saying ton, 25 kips right here. And uh, so the shear is going to, if you take a moment, this is RA, RB. Let's take a moment about point B is equal to 0. Summation moment about point B is equal to 0. Counterclockwise is positive. I want to find out what RA comes out to. <coughs> I'm going to have um, minus RA times 45 feet plus 25 times 45 feet and plus 25 times 43 feet. No, that's a 4 feet, so it'll be 41 feet. 41 feet equals 0. And uh, RB, which so my Vmax comes out to 
same as the RB and comes out to a 47.8 kip and this one still control. All right, so that was it. So no, we're not done. Um, what, what, what happened is, so when we do a live load, we, we do um, the winner of the HL93 on tandem, which came out HL93. So the next one we're going to do, uh, the it's going to be uh, um, if so, uh, for design lane load, we have uh, uniform distributor load of uh, 640 pound per foot or 0.64 kip per foot. Okay. And this is easy to calculate. We don't have to do anything. We're just going to say ML is equal WL squared divided by 8. Um, and that's going to become 0.64 times 45 squared. Divide that by 8, and that comes out to uh, uh, 162 foot and then our share is going to come out VL for uh, li design load it's going to be WL divided by 2.64 times 45 divided by 2 and that comes out to 14.4 uh, <coughs> kip all right so now we have that and uh, write that down M no, based on Ashto, uh, Ashto 3.6.2.1 uh, we have to add 33% for dynamic load. So MLL plus IM, uh, it's going to be, uh, so our ML plus uh, IM is equal to, uh, we had the distribution factor that we figured out 0.64 right there. 0.64, this is the one I'm using right here. Multiply by, and then we had the time 133%. And that's going to be time, our max came out to 538.7. Time <coughs> 538.7. And that comes out to, uh, and then we have plus, and we had 162 kip foot, and that comes out to uh, 566.61. 566.61 kip foot. I need that number. And then I have the VLL plus I, and the distribution factor came up 0.814. <coughs> time 1.33, time uh, 57.06, and then uh, plus 14 pound, 14 kips, 14.4 kips. And that comes out to 73.5 uh, kip. So down here, I'm going to go ahead. Let me use a different color. M L L plus I comes out to uh, 566. 0.6 kip foot. And V L L plus I comes out to 73.5 kip. We need those numbers later on. OK. That brings us to step number seven. Let me erase all this stuff. go to step number seven, we're going to compute uh, factor, moment, and shear. Step number seven, compute factor, moment, and shear. Um, <coughs> if we look at Ashto, uh, table Ashto, uh, a point uh, Ashto three point four point one dash one and also dash two and you can see that on the screen 
we know that mu is equal for strength one, um, strength one is um, 1.25 uh, mdc plus 1.5 uh, wearing surface mdw plus uh, 1.75 life plus I am the um, and that comes out to <coughs> mu is equal 1.25 DC it came out to <laughs> 240.46plus 29.87. And then we have plus 1.5. DW came out to uh, 46.32 plus 1.75, uh, 566.6. So MU comes out to. Fourteen oh four. Keep for we need that number. Then the VU following the same format. It's a one point two five time uh, twenty one thirty seven plus uh, two sixty six kip. And 1.5 for the wearing came out to be 412 and 1.75 came out for uh, 73.5 and that comes out to uh, DU comes out to be 164.8 kip okay we need this baby here yeah. All right, we're going to go to step eight. Let me erase the board. Next step is getting a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do here, we're going to transform the concrete area to an equivalent of steel area. And the way we did that, we said we're going to take the um, width of the concrete deck, divide them by the N. And N was basically the ratio of the uh, modular elasticity of steel divided by modular elasticity of concrete which came out to seven something and we said okay let's use eight and that's why we're using eight right here and so we shrink this to this area so basically now we have a composite section here and this is our girder and this is our hunch which came out basically was a uh, um, uh, nine inch divided by uh, eight and then our girder our concrete deck itself came out to 96 divided by 8 which comes out to 12 inches so this is what we have we've got to work with this now so let's continue with step number eight here step number eight and i'm going to go ahead and just separate this area uh, and this step uh, let's go to look at the um what i want to do here i want to find out the plastic neutral axis of this uh, uh composite section so um Let's look at the table, D6, okay, so what we got to find here, we got to find a plastic neutral axis. So to do that, um, let me bring my Excel sheet up here, bring that up so you can see it. Um, what we need to do. We're going to look at the, some design criteria first. Take a look at what I have up in my Excel sheet. So we know the uh, specified minimum yield strength is a 60 KSI for this, not 50. In the class we use 50. And the TC is equal to TF, which is a, a thickness of the uh, um, flange in compression. And uh, then we have the thickness of the slab at 8 inches. Then we have the TT equal TF, which is a um, flange thickness and tension is a 0.68 inches and the web thickness is a 0.44 inches then we're going to look for crt which is the distance from the top of the concrete 
to a top layer of longitudinal concrete deck reinforcement, uh, which is a three inches, and we also have a CRB, which is a distance from the top of the concrete deck to the bottom layer of the uh, rebar, and it's a five inches. And one of the things we have to find out is the, uh, the plastic force in the bottom layer of the longitudinal deck reinforcement. We can neglect that. And same thing with the plastic reinforcement in the top layer of the reinforcement. We can neglect those two for now. But we've got to find the, the uh, plastic uh, compression force and uh, plastic compression uh, force in the flange and the slab, and then find the, uh, the plastic force in the tension flange and then the plastic force in the web. All right, let's get to work. <coughs> um, I'm going to start out with the PS uh, is equal, and that was a, and the PS was uh, the plastic compression force in the uh, slab, which is a 0.85 time uh, F prime C and uh, time BS time TS. And which is equal 0.85 time, I thought we used 4,500, yeah, 4,500, 4.5 KSI, and then uh, our BS was uh, 96 inches time um, TS, the thickness was 8 inches. We get to this later on, but let's just go ahead and find these here, and that came out to uh, um, 2937.6. So PX is equal to 2937.6. Kip. And we said we can neglect the PRB, which is uh, same as a PRT. Let's neglect those for now. And the plastic force in the compression flange, which is a PC, and that is equal. Um, F Y C B C time T C. So that comes out to uh, we had this was sixty KSI uh, time uh, B C is nine inch down there, and then time the thickness was point six eight. So that comes out to. Uh, 367.2 kip. Then we're going to look for the plastic force in a web, and that's going to be uh, Fy web times d tw. So now we have 60 times uh, 22.5. The web is 22.5. So 22.5, and then the thickness was 0.44 inches. We had all that material information from the AAC. So we have 595 kip. Then we want to find a plastic um, force uh, uh, in a tension flange tension in the flange, so we're going to say PT is equal, um, where do I have that, FYT time BT TT, and that's it's a 60 KSI time 9 time 0.68, and that comes out to 30, 367.2. We already did that. So now we have two of them are about the same. Okay. Then next we're going to go to a head. Find the uh, neutral axis, plastic neutral axis. And that is equal. Same as uh, we're going to say y bar y prime, which is equal uh, TS time uh, PRT 
class PC plus PW plus PT and P RV. Divided by uh, PS, so that comes out to uh, our Y bar comes out to uh, eight times zero plus three six seven point two plus five ninety five plus three six seven point two plus zero. Divide that by uh, 29, 37.6 up here. OK. So that comes out to um, 3.62 inches from top. Now, there's another way we can find this out, uh, uh, which we talked about in class. Let me see if I have a room if I can put it down here. I think I can make it. This is the lowest I can go. Right here is the lowest. I'm going to write in a different color. If I use what our compression block is, A is equal, um, we did this in class, A time F of Y divided by uh, 0.85 f prime c time bff so that comes out to uh, our area of the steel came out to 22.4 22.4 times 60 ksi divide that by um, 0.85 4.5 kips and i think the bf was uh, Eight feet or ninety-six inches, and that comes out to three point six six. Same as that one. Anyway, so now we have that. We know our the plastic neutral axis is going to be way up here in the concrete. So that means what? Let me erase this board. We talk about it. Six point one point one, which I got on a board right there, and look at the different cases. Case one, case two, case three. Normally we go through all these different cases. And we calculate. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip all the cases. Go to the case that we can fit in, which is a case number five, concrete deck above uh, uh, PRB, shown PRT. And we're going to fit into, uh, um, so we're going to find a plastic moment right there. And that's how we found everything. And now uh, we fit in a, a case number uh, five. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate that. All right, so I wrote this stuff down to save some time here. Our plastic moment, based on the table D6, comes out to this equation. We have already calculated PS, PRV, and these are two zero anyway, and PC, PW, and PT. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the plastic moment. But before we go ahead, we need to find out what is the uh, uh, DC, DW, and DT is. And basically, DC, if you take a look at what I have on the picture, DC is the distance from the mid span of the uh, distance from the mid span of the steel compression to the plastic neutral axis. So that become basically eight, um, eight plus the two inch hunch plus halfway here minus this distance, and that's where it come from. And DW is basically the from middle of here. Uh, DW is the eight plus the two. And from here, top here to there is 23.9. Uh, divided by the 2 will be right here. And minus the uh, 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 this distance from the pr plastic neutral axis to the top. And dt, which is right here, the center of this right here, all the way to the neutral axis. And that's where it comes from. So now we have that. This is what we can do. Plug in here. And our plastic moment comes out to 2230 uh, foot kip. And he was kip inch divided by 12, it makes it a foot kip. And that's where uh, our plastic moment comes out to. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, compute the plastic shear resistant VP. 
and VP, it's going to be uh, from the formula from, t uh, hold on, let me write the, the formula down, 0.58 time uh, Fy W time D time Tw. And that's from Ashto, uh, 6.10, and I have put on the screen, 0.9.22. 0.9.2.2. And so VP comes out to 0.58 time 60 KSI time 22.54 and TW was 40.44. And that comes out to a uh, 345.2 kip. So if we're going to check for strength one, limit state, and um, Fy is equal 60 KSI, and it has to be less than 70. And that's based on uh, spec says you have to make sure you're less than that, and we are. And that's a 610. Point six point two, so that checks out. And the next thing we're going to check is uh, um, D T W, as you can see on the screen, which is twenty two point five four divided by a uh, point four four, and that comes out to a uh, fifty one point. And that has to be less than 150. And the spec says uh, six section uh, 6.10.2.1.1.1. For the same thing over there, we got to check out, make sure 2 the CP divided by uh, TW is which is uh, our DCP became zero because our depth of our uh, uh, girder depth of our girder web compression is not the compression zone is way in, in, in the concrete it's not here so that d that DCP comes out equal zero okay so that becomes zero and uh, which has to be less than uh, 0 0.367 square root of modulus of elasticity divided by Fy. So that checks out also. Continue with that. This marker is getting tired. We have uh, our DP, which was compared to size of a uh, from neutral axis to the top is 3.62. We knew that. And that uh, has to be an our DT. Our DT is uh, 23.9 plus 8, plus 2 plus 8. And this whole thing come out 33.9. 33.9, we knew that. So now the spec says, uh, 0.1 dp, dt, I'm sorry, which is equal to uh, 3.39. And in uh, Ashto, 6.10.7.1.2, so it says if dp is less than 0.1 dt, then uh, plastic moment is equal nominal moment. But in our case, it's not, because our dp comes out bigger than 0.1 dt. Therefore, our man is equal uh, plastic moment time 1.07 minus 0.7 time dp divided by uh, dt. 
which is equal, we had, I rested, I believe, and time 1.07 minus 0 0.7 times 362 divided by uh, 33.9, and that comes out to MN. Two 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 five Kipfoot. So that's that. Let me rest the board here. Okay, so now we gotta satisfy the uh, Ashto uh, six point ten point uh, seven point one. And it says that at the strength limit state, the section shall satisfy MU. I'm write this down MU uh, plus one third of uh, FL 1404. 1404 is less than one time uh, 22225. So that checks out. We checked the, uh, our uh, flux work checks out. Uh, so fluctuate for interior girder checks out. Now we're going to move on to, uh, I think we, we did the shear too. Did we do the shear? No, we've got to find the shear now. Okay. So now, we, now we're going to go ahead and continue for the uh, shear. And uh, find the shear resistance. We know uh, phi VU is equal 1. It's just like that one. And from uh, Ashto, 6.10.9.2, we have Vn is equal uh, Vcr, which is equal uh, Cvp. Let's find out what C comes out to, but before we do that, we got to go to Ashto uh, 6.10.9.2. And um, I think 2 dash 7 maybe. We're gonna find out. We gotta find k, and k is equal uh, five plus five divided by uh, d zero divided by uh, d because this number is so large. So we're just gonna say five. So this number becomes so small, and then we're gonna go to Ashto six point nine point three point two, and you're gonna say d divided by t w. Uh, has to be less than or equal 1.12 square root of uh, E K divided by uh, F Y W, and uh, that comes out to uh, 22.5 times 4. Divide that by uh, 0.44. And that should be less than or equal. That comes out to 51.2. 1 1.12 uh, square root of 29,000 KSI and divided by uh, 60. So we're going to end up with uh, 51.2 less than uh, 55.1. Therefore, because of that, per Ashto, now C is equal 1. So now C here is equal 1. And therefore, we're going to go say Vn is equal Cvp, which is equal 1 time Vp, which is equal 345.2. We uh, I erased it, 345.2. And our came out to V U came out one sixty four. Since V is one, therefore one sixty four our V U uh, we're gonna say uh, V U should be less than uh, V N 
and it is less than 345.2 and that checks out. So the shear checks out too. Okay, <coughs> do is uh, figure out the uh, moment inertia for this composite section. We know the uh, moment inertia is equal to 112 VHQ plus AB squared. We've got five different sections or three different sections. We can cancel one here, the hunch, and let's take the whole beam as one by itself. First, we're going to find out the neutral axis, which is basically equal to summation of A y divided by summation of A. Using a spread Excel sheet, that come out to 26.5. So if this is 23.9 up to here, it's going to be someplace around here. So our neutral axis is going to be right there. And let's find out the calculating the moment inertia. There's three different ways you can calculate it. You can calculate each individual one, like I have on board, or we can calculate the uh, using Excel sheet like this one I have here. This one, two, three, or a lot of times uh, when they do this calculation, they just ignore the hunch and they have the uh, block on top and the beam and they calculate that way. Either way, I calculated the, in a long way each individual. I came out to become um, 8524, 8524.4 inch by power 4. So now, once we have that, we're going to go ahead and calculate the um, in college when we want to find a stress we said uh, sigma is equal to mc divided by i and c was the, if the distance from neutral axis all the way to the further outmost and we said that was the c i remember remember the class we talked about we had this beam like this so this is a beam and it's kind of um, bending like that um, and if the neutral axis was right down here and this distance was the mc over i the stress was most at the top or bottom and the distance C is from here to there. So now we want to find out the top of the flange. So it's going to be distance between the neutral axis and that. And how we find that it's going to be C is equal uh, 26.5, which was neutral axis, and we have 23.9, and that gives me um, 2.6 inches. So 2.6 inches. Now I'm going to say I'm going to say S a top. Uh, remember this formula. S is equal. Uh, I divided by C, so as a top, it's going to be for me uh, 8524, 8524.4 divided by uh, 2.6, so my S a top is going to be uh, 3278.5, 3278.5 inch by power 2. And uh, remember we calculated all this stuff. We calculated the moment due to uh, DC was 240, due to uh, wearing surface was 46, and the total moment was for uh, baffle was 566. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the stress on top of the flange. And um, I have all this information. Let me clear this out. Okay, so now the steel top flange stress as due to the uh, surface tool load R. Let's calculate that. Um, bring in different color here. Let me start out with these. Go with one of these. And F at DC, that's a stress due to the uh, uh, DC load, which was 240.46 time. Uh, 12, that's a foot cable member, and divide that by uh, uh, S a top, um, which is, um, let me do this correctly, makes sense if I, is 
MDC divided by S at top. And now I have 240.46 times 12 divided by um, 3278.5. So that comes out to 0.88 kip. KSI, FADW, and that is uh, MDW, mm, good one, divided by S at top. So that is um, DW came out to be 4632 divided by. 3278.5 and that gave me 0 0.169 okay for the spirit then I have the one do the total load F L L plus I and that's come out to uh, 566 point one time 12 I forgot to put the 12 up here and divide that by 3278.5 and that comes out to 2.07 2.07 KSI now if we look at the table 3. Ashto Ashto table uh, 3.4.1 We're going to have um, the factor is going to be F of F is equal 1 time F of DC plus 1 time F of DW plus 1.3 time F of uh, LL plus IM plus I. And that's going to become basically F of F comes out to uh, one time DC is going to be 0.88, and that's time one plus one time uh, 0.169 plus one time uh, 207, and that comes out to 374 KSI. All right, from section uh, Ashto 6.10.4.2.2-1, F of F should be less or equal than 0.95 time R H, I believe. Where's the N? Hold on, let me see that. Uh -huh. Okay. R H time uh, F of Y F, and that's equal three point seven four. So I got 3.74 should be less than or equal 0.95, and RH is basically one here, and time uh, 60 ksi, and that comes out to uh, 57 ksi. So you can see what a big difference. So that checks out. Okay, let me erase this book. Now we're going to do the same thing for the bottom flange. Just change that to a bottom. Okay. And uh, continue with that. The Ashto section uh, 610.4.2. It tells us that FF should be less than plus F of L 
divided by 2 should be less than or equal of uh, 0.95 time RH time uh, FY. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say S at bottom is equal I divided by C and I was 85 24 point two and C is the distance between the neutral axis and the bottom flange that's going to come out to uh, 26.5 basically yeah it become the yeah 26.5 26.5 and that comes out to uh, 321.7 cubic inch so now um, F at DC is equal MDC divided by uh, S at bottom. So MDC was uh, 240.46 divided by 321.7 and that comes out to um, 897 KSI. There's one. If DW equals same thing, uh, 46.32 divided by uh, 321.7, and that comes out to 1.72 um, KSI. Okay, and then I'm going to have F of uh, LL plus I. And that was 566.6 divided by 321.7. And that comes out to uh, 2111. And the factor load, which we had before, FF, remember? And that was one time this one th this one time uh, eight ninety seven plus one time one seven two plus one point three time um, twenty one eleven. So FF comes out to thirty eight thirteen. And that should be less than this right here, which is uh, 0.95 time 1 and times 60. So that is less than uh, 57 KSI, which checks out. Okay, now, remember when we did beam design in other classes and we said, when you have a beam design, you check for thrust work, which we did in here. You check for shear, which we did. And uh, we're going to check for deflection. So we're going to find a deflection of this beam. So let me erase this board. We go with deflection. Um, life load deflection per ashto, uh, a... Uh, 2.5 and uh, 3.6.1.3.2 and basically says uh, L over 800 so L over 800 and that comes out to uh, um, 45 feet that's our L divided by 12 10 12 divided by 800 and that will give us a 0.675 and so that's our limit so how are we going to calculate the deflection there you go let's uh, figure that out so I'm asked 2.5.2.62 I butchered that up but that's okay the deflection factor bring that bring that this marker the deflection factor is uh, deflection. 
is equal um, number of lanes divide that by um, number of girders number of beams so that's going to be uh, my steam always come from you get a bad handwriting that's okay that's why I became an engineer no actually doctor has a worse handwriting so uh, beam that it become uh, we had number two lanes we had two lanes going in there yeah you can't put more than two lanes that's right so we got two lane divided by uh, six beam, and that's equal 0.33 for our uh, our uh, deflection factor. Now, um, I can do it down here, I guess. Let me um, do the uh, our uh, beam here. So we have uh, this type of a situation, and um, our center line is right here. So this is our center line, and we have the HL93, which is the military loading. Um, we have one load right here, and that's the middle load. That's a P1. Let's say P1 is equal to uh, 32 kips. We know that. The second load is right here at 14 favorite. That's a P2. That's equal P2, which is 8 kip. And the third load is right here. It's still P1 because it's a 32 kip. So that's the same as a P1. So we're going to say P1, P1, P2. And the distance is going to be, this was uh, 45 feet. So if I put this in the center, that's a 14 feet. That's a 14 feet. And this is going to become 8.5 feet. And this is going to become eight and a half feet. All right. So now we have that. We just we could go off the center a little bit, but for simplicity, just let's stick with the center. So now I'm going to go ahead. Let me erase all this stuff. We do the, the, the keep this mind number in in mind. I'm going to come back up here because our DF. Let me write it down here. Our DF deflection was uh, deflection DF point three three. is equal our deflection factor time uh, P1 and uh, time plus 1 plus that's not I that's 1 1 plus I and the factor is it comes out to 0.33 time P1 is a 32 kips 32 kips time uh, 1 plus 33 so that's a 1 that comes out to uh, 1.33 because it's a 32 percent here time 1.3 so that comes out to 14.04 uh, 14.04 14 .04 kip and p2 gonna come out to that's gonna be for this one and this one and P2 is this one. It's going to come out to uh, DF, which is a 0 0.33 time 8 time 1.33 again. And that comes out to uh, uh, 3.5 kip. Okay. So our deflection is going to be delta P1 for the beam plus delta P2 for the beam plus delta P1 for the beam because 1, 2, 3. And um, if you look at the what we have on the board from AS, uh, uh, from the uh, deflection chart, and we can say that um, let me write this down. Delta um, is equal summation basically of all those uh, PDX divided by. Um, E E I L and time L square minus D square minus X square then plus PL 
which will be in this case P1 L cube divided by 48 EI. Okay, that's the next sentence. So uh, let's go ahead and get to work on this one. Um, and we uh, need room, so I'm going to erase this here. <coughs> When x is less than L over 2, our delta is going to come out to uh, So our p is 14 for an O4 uh, time b. Our b is basically, uh, I'm going to write it down. It's a 14 feet plus 14 feet plus 8.5 feet and multiply that by 12. So this right here, it's basically B. And then time X. Our X is going to be um, 8 and a half times 12 because we want to convert to inches. So this is your X up here. And uh, let's divide that by E, which was a 6 in this case, uh, 6 times 29,000 KSI, time I was uh, 85.24, time uh, 45 feet, make it inches, 10, 12. So this, divide that and multiply this by this number. And L squared was a uh, um, remember, we're doing a summation, so we got to do for P1 and P2. And um, P1 is going to be uh, 540. You can figure that out. That's the uh, basically, uh, um, let's take a square root of that. 540 squared plus 438. These numbers multiply by each other. This one is going to come out to uh, 438. And um, L is uh, 45 times 12 becomes 540. That's what becomes squared. Minus, this is a minus, by the way, minus B. B is going to be right there, which is 438. We already have that squared. And then uh, minus X squared, X is this one, which comes out to uh, um, 102 squared. Minus 102 squared, okay? So that's that. This whole thing multiplied by that, no. And again, we're going to go ahead and uh, plus, because it's a summation. So that was for uh, uh, P1. Now for P2, because it's a summation, P, B, B, X, we have P1, P2, what was it? P1, one is in the middle. One's on the other side, and the other one's going to be the eight and a half. So Stick with me. Uh, plus, we're going to have the P2, which is 3.5. That's P2. And that was P1. We have two P1. So 3.5 times uh, 102. That's our B. Times 438. That's our X. Divide this by this whole thing right here. We're just going to call it ditto, which is this right here, basically. And let's write it down. And then time, same thing, 540 squared L squared minus 102 squared, which is our uh, B squared, in this case, for P2. And our X is going to, for P2, is going to be 438. Am I right? Mm, yes, I am right. 438 squared. So that was for uh, P1 and P2. Remember one of the P1 was right down in the middle? For that one in the middle, <coughs> we know how to do that. That basically is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 5W
L by power 4 divided by, uh, no, I have them right here. Right here, P1 L cubed divided by 488. Okay, so plus, and P1 was uh, 1404 times L cubed is uh, 540 by power 3 and divided by 48 EI. 48, 29,000. I was uh, 85, 24, 85, 24, 85, 24. And this whole thing comes out to uh, 0.27 inches. OK. Now the code says, let me erase this. Now the code says 25% truck Delta T plus um, uh, delta lane. And then we're going to calculate that. So 25%, uh, we're going to, we knew already have the truck. So delta lane is basically based on uh, uh, that uh, 640 pound uh, um, uniform distributed load. So that's easy. So delta lane is equal. Let me write down here delta lane is equal uh, the formula for you can find w 5w l by power 4 divided by uh, 348 ei so it's 5 time 0.64 um, time 540 by power of 4 divided by 12 remember this l4 has an l here this w is point six four per foot so you gotta take a one foot out of there and then divide that by three hundred and forty eight twenty nine thousand eighty five twenty four and that comes out to point two three eight point two three eight so if I go ahead and say point two five time point two seven plus point two three eight and that gives me a uh, um, 0.306, which is less than, remember we had L over 800? L over 800, which was, we calculated earlier, 0.675, and checked. This was a long problem. I'd probably say one of the longest problems I've done in YouTube, but I do. Um, but that's how you do it. Thank you. Hope you give me a thumbs up.